a JustAZ.com production. Hi, I recently added some plants to my aquarium. Turns out, I really don't have much of a green thumb. Talked to some of my friends and they suggested getting a CO2 reactor. I looked at some of their tanks, their plants were thriving. So I decided that maybe that CO2 reactor would be the way to go. So I got my trusty fish catalog and started looking at them. First we have a deluxe fully automatic CO2 system. Up to a 500 gallon aquarium, consistently monitors pH, automatically turns the CO2 on and off. Boy, this sounds great. $439, not so great. There's another one, semi-automatic. Well, I guess it doesn't have to be completely automatic. Up to 200 gallons, injects CO2 into your aquarium, automatically shuts off at night. $229. Still a little out of my price range. And then the bottles of CO2, $29.49 for a one month supply, all for a couple of plants. I need to find a cheaper alternative to this. I think I've come up with a solution. Turns out it's fairly easy to make a CO2 reactor from bits and pieces I already have here at home. To start with, we need something to mix the CO2. A soda bottle. A way to move it into the aquarium, some airline tubing. And a way to disperse it, an air stone. We're also going to add a couple other little items. I have a smaller bottle here, which we're going to use to regulate the CO2. A check valve for safety so the water doesn't back up or flow out of the aquarium back into the CO2 bottle. And some rigid tubing. Already drilled the holes. In the two liter cap, I drilled one. And in my smaller bottle, I drilled two. What I'm doing is I'm going to be inserting the rigid tubing in here. The reason I'm using rigid tubing is I want to use hot glue and hot glue with airline tubing is not always the best idea. It has a tendency of working its way loose So I wanted to use uh, rigid tubing. What I do is on the 2 liter I just put it in maybe an inch or so and on the smaller bottle I do the same thing with one of them by an inch or so and then I have a longer one which will go down into the bottle and not quite to the bottom. And what I do now Is a little hot glue. We'll let that dry for about 10 minutes. We only need three ingredients to make the CO2 sugar, a cup and a quarter, baking soda, a teaspoon, and active yeast. The more yeast that is used, the more CO2 is produced. For example, if I use a tablespoon of yeast, I will produce a lot of CO2, let's say for a 55 gallon tank. However, it will only last about a week. Now let's say I have a 10 gallon tank, I'll use a teaspoon of yeast. This will last about four weeks before I have to put more in our CO2 reactor. To start with, we will use a cup of warm water and pour the yeast in to get it to activate. and then we'll set this aside. Start with, we pour the sugar in. Then baking soda. To this, we'll add some warm water.
about halfway up the bottom. Then we'll mix it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add our yeast into our sugar mixture. an inch and three quarters to two inches from the top. Okay, now we can connect everything. What I've done is this sticks down about a half inch or so below the cap of our two liter. Add on there. And that is connected to our long tube, which I put in this container of water, just regular plain old cold water. Now the second tube is above the water. Then I have our check valve in line, and for the demonstration, and we'll make this a tank. And I'll put the air stone inside. Now we're going to have to give it a little while for the yeast to activate. It's always good to give it a little shake, get it started, and we'll come back in about an hour and we should be producing CO2. We're now producing CO2 in this jar here. As you can see, the air stone, the CO2 is going through the air stone and bubbling up to the top. How this all works is the yeast is eating the sugar and the byproduct it's making is CO2. The CO2 is collected in this space in this bottle and once it builds up the pressure we we'll start going through this tube and all the way to the bottom of our bubble counter. By the way the tape on the bubble counter was we had a slight little leak so I just put a little tape around there to stop the leak. Right now we're running about 150 to 175 bubbles a minute. That's a little bit higher than what I was looking for, so next, my next batch I will make it with a little bit less yeast, which will slow this down. The bubble's up to here, and we start collecting CO2 again, which goes through the tube and into our tank. Now, we're using the airstone as a diffuser, and it's working pretty good, but a lot of the CO2 is rising up to the surface, and we want to keep it in the water. I think I have an idea on how we can improve on this. By removing the airstone, and placing the line in your tank, and putting it into your power head, CO2 is broken up and dispersed throughout the water. While my DIY CO2 reactor doesn't continually monitor my pH or automatically turn on and off, I do feel good keeping the $439 in my pocket and my plants still enjoy the benefits of CO2 in the tank. Thanks for watching. Questions or comments? Put them in the comment section below and subscribe to our channel for more videos on the DIY lifestyle.